some time ago, I found myself saying goodbye and thank you to my voice assistant. And I was like, uh, okay, why are you saying thank you to your assistant that's just a piece of hardened software? <laughs> well, turns out I'm not alone. Actually, half of the US users say please and thank you. <laughs> Millions say I love you, <laughs> propose to her daily, and some even want to have sex with her. <laughs> well, but think about it. Just because people say they love their voice assistant, does that necessarily mean that they are actually in love with their device as they would be with other humans? If not, how do people actually relate to these systems that you know, talk back to them almost like real humans? And that's what we wanted to find out. We studied around 1,000 conversational AI users by using a relationship theory from psychology. And here we found that people relate to their AI systems in three ways. First, the traditional master-servant relationship, then a non-hierarchical rational relationship, and a friend-like relationship. Now, first we found that only few actually see their AI system as a friend. That's not surprising because after all, they are marketed as digital assistants, so it's not surprising that most of the people see their relationship as the actual master-servant relationship. What we found interesting was that the rational, non-hierarchical relationship was almost as popular as the traditional master-servant relationship. In that relationship, people believe um, that they are somewhat on eye level with their AI system, and they share control or power with the system. Now, this finding could be interesting for developers, because how people relate to their systems may influence how they use it. So um, consider a simple task, such as setting the alarm. You know, not much interaction required, short, simple interaction. But consider a complex task, such as online shopping with a voice assistant only. Requires more engagement, multi-turn dialogues, potential data sharing, more financial risks. In other words, they share more responsibility. So if we want to use these systems for more complex tasks, it might make sense that we see them or design them more as partners in decision-making rather than those mere order-takers. So we wonder whether the role of the digital assistant as our servants will somehow go out of fashion. And we investigated this question by looking at voice shopping decisions. Specifically, we ask whether the way I relate to my voice assistant will influence what kind of products I buy. And here, we differentiated cheap and simple products, and a complex and expensive products. And now hang with me, this needs your full attention. We made two assumptions. First, we thought that people who would relate to the system as friend or servant would be more likely to buy those cheap and simple products, like toilet paper. You don't have to think about a lot, you know, and you can easily uh, delegate this decision to your voice assistant because you trust it like a friend, or the task is so simple that you can easily delegate it to a simple servant. Second, we thought it was different for the complex, expensive products, like buying a laptop. This needs a lot of decision-making, right, about the quality, the functions, and so on, and people might even need a sales agent to get advice. So we thought that for uh, these complex products, that people who see their assistant more as rational and you know, attribute some agency to the system would be more likely to buy those expensive products. Well, turns out we were right, but also wrong in our assumptions. The first assumption was right. People who see their device as a friend or servant are more likely to buy cheap products. Second assumption, wrong. When it comes to the complex, expensive products, it was not the rational, non-hierarchical relationship perception that mattered most. Even here, it was the perception of the assistant as a friend that mattered, that predicted voice shopping. In other words, friendship sells. Even the expensive stuff. <laughs> so, what now? Would I, are we done with the era of digital assistants as our servants, and would I go out and recommend everyone to design for AI friends? I would, <laughs> if I had no moral compass. <laughs> <laughs> 
I do believe that uh, humanizing machines is a blessing. It helps us dealing with them, and it's really also more much, much more fun. But it also comes with a curse. It makes us vulnerable. It may lead to oversharing personal data, or voice assistants can be used to influence us to make decisions that, you know, buy things that we don't want or don't need. And on top of that, some mm. have even found that people get addicted to AI friends. So what do we do when the attachment to these technologies turn into unhealthy addiction or any un other unhealthy behaviors? I don't think that we are anywhere near ready to deal with this. And this is why I strongly believe that we must better understand human-AI relationships. Of course, to build better systems, but also to protect the users. Because these psychological relationship mechanisms, they can be exploited so easily in many ways that may be very difficult to control. So please, think about that the next time you say thank you to your voice assistant.